Welcome everyone. So let's get started. Today's talk is about future of multimedia protection. But before I present it, let me give you a brief self introduction about myself. And there are like seven people in this room. So let's get started. So my name is Sajad. I am a software developer and a professor and researcher in the fields of cybersecurity and AI. I published too many papers in the fields of image watermarking and ownership protection and tamper detection. And I am somehow professional in this field. And that's why I chose this topic for today's talk. So this is the outline. First of all, uh, we're going to get familiar with watermarking technology. And in the section two, I'm going to present you the two main applications of digital watermarking, which are ownership protection and tamper detection. Next, in the section three, we get familiar with future camera systems built-in watermarking systems. And at the end, we have a wrap up. We, I give you a summary and additional resources for those people who are interested to learn more about this topic. So watermark technology. What is watermark technology? So, but before I explain watermark technology, let me tell you something that because of the rapid spread of multimedia data across the internet and social media, there are high potential threats and I mean threats and like attack attackers, malicious attacks regarding the misuse of data. So we want to prevent this misuse of data. We want to track or prove the misuse, uh, misuse of data. And that's why watermarking technology was introduced. In fact, watermarking technology is one of the most comprehensive and effective forms of protection against piracy and the illegal use, download, distribution of digital content in all its forms. So as you can see in this picture, the basic concept in digital watermarking systems is to insert a permanent watermark signal into a cover data for the purpose of intellectual property protection, broadcast monitoring, and access control, etc. So, as I said, the, mix, uh, the basic concept is to insert a watermark sync signal to into a cover data. This cover data, as you can see on the screen can be any kind of digital data, image, video, audio, a digital file, like text or PDF. And digital watermarking has two main steps. First, embedding and second, extra extracting. So in the embedding uh, step, we, as I said, we embed a, a watermark signal. This watermark signal can be any kind of identification data, for example, identification number, a logo or a label, uh, something about the owner of that digital content. So we embed a watermark signal into the cover data. And, other, and on the other side, we extracted the watermark detector, extract the watermark in, in case if something happened, we can extract the watermark signal and prove the ownership or other for other application of digital watermarking. So we can consider digital watermarking as a communication model. Here we you can see my mouse pointer. So here we consider sending two messages in this 
in a, sig a single signal through a channel. This channel can be on the internet or social media. So we insert an identification number, a logo as a watermark based on, based on a secret watermarking key into an original cover data, which can be image, audio, video, etc. So, and on the other side of the this communication model, we have two receivers. One is human being that should receive something very similar to the original cover data, and there should not be any perceptual difference between the original cover data, original cover data, and water market cover data. And the other part of uh, the second receiver is watermark detector. The watermark detector should be able to extract the embedded watermark even after attacks are applied or noise. So that's the communication model of watermarking. And let's get familiar with the um, ownership protection. So how does watermarking protect ownership? So in watermark technology, we can protect ownership by using embedding robust watermark. Let me give you an example. Uh, imagine someone stole your photo and took uh, the, your photo you took by your camera, stole your photo, and that person participated in a photography contest with your photo and won the photography award. And how do you want to prove that that photo is absolutely yours and the award should be given to you? In this case, in this case, in this scenario, I mean, if you already, if you already embedded a robot watermark into the that image, uh, so for example, identification number or logo of your company, it's easy and you easily can prove that the photo is absolutely yours. In fact, robust watermark can survive not only in general operations such as compression, changing format, but also against geometric attacks such as rotation, scaling, and so on. So in this picture, this picture is from one of my published papers in, a, in the top journal. And you see on the first column, this is the, the original, what, uh, I mean, there is no attack apply under this image, and this is the extracted watermarks. There are, I embedded two watermark logos into this image. We, ex we extract it here, you can see. And here in this picture, in the middle, uh, middle column, you see we add salt and noise addition with high density, and still we are able to extract the watermark. And here on this corner, on the low left corner of the picture, you see that one quarter of one quarter of image is destroyed, but still we are able to extract the watermark. Um, uh, you know, because we embed the watermark throughout the image, not only a specific part of the image, throughout the image, so it's somehow so, so robust. And if someone wants to remove our watermark, cannot, uh, cannot remove it. Um, that's why we call it robust watermark. So let's get family with uh, tamper detection, which is the second uh, application, main application of uh, watermarking. So we do tamper detection by fragile watermarking. What is fragile watermarking? In fact, fragile watermark is kind of watermark that is very sensitive to tamper and detection. We embed this sensitive, uh, fragile watermark into the image as a mask. Since this fragile watermark is sensitive to any tamper, it will be destroyed if someone try to 
tamper a part of it. And finally, in the extraction part shows us which part of the image is tampered. That's how we can verify the authentication of multimedia data by using, using the fragile wire marking. Here in this picture, I am showing to you by my mouse pointer. Here's, uh, the first column shows a tagged watermarked image. Here you see that one quarter of this image is destroyed. And the, in the authentication results, uh, we, we see the result, we detect the tampered part, uh, the tampered part of our image with black color. And on the right column, you see the extracted watermark uh, image that shows us which part is tampered. And here you see the accuracy is very high in most cases. Accuracy like 99%, 100 and here is 82% is the accuracy rate. So we embed a fragile and sensitive watermark into our image and we extract it and we see if it's kind of uh, tampered, we can immediately realize that and the fragile watermark shows us which part is tampered. It's like robust watermark, it is embedded throughout the image. And there, is, there is, should not be any perceptual difference between the uh, original data and uh, fragile watermark data. So let's get a uh, family of these future camera systems. Future camera make watermark your image automatically, whether you want it to or not. In fact, image manipulation is just about as old as photography itself. But in the modern era, it's hard to imagine it becoming an ex existential crisis, I mean. In fact, deepfake technology takes advantage of AI to create realistic fake image videos. And here, social medias uh, uh, com uh, combat, and they really want to prevent the spread of fake multimedia data or misinformation on their social media ecosystem. Sorry for this uh, mistake, it's com uh, combat, not compat. So uh, as I said, social media wants to prevent the spread of fake technology, fake, uh, deep fake photos and images. And here researchers suggest uh, a new way of built-in watermarking for next uh, generation camera systems which I explain in the next slide. Here is the process. Uh, please follow my mouse pointer here. Imagine you have a camera or a smartphone, you take a picture. At the same time of taking picture, a watermark will be embedded into your image or video. And uh, using AI and your hardware, and when we uh, when we send this image on the internet, uh, on the other side, uh, we don't know. I mean, most people don't know whether this is a kind of uh, manipulated copies, the original copy. They don't have. They have no idea about this image. We we share it on the internet. So, on the other side. People use forensic analysis to separate, to distinguish the original and manipulated the, uh, data or image or any kind of digital content. And then here in forensics analysis, uh, we send optimization feedback to the imaging pipeline to develop our process. I mean, uh, we, we repeat this process over and over, so the accuracy rate of 
um, temper detection and owner protection increase over time. In addition, this purpose system gets always updated against new and developed the fake technology. And let's move on. Here are some advantages of using built-in watermarking for next generation camera systems. Here, a researcher wants to make uh, images and videos which are forensic friendly and it's easier for us to do tamper detections. We want to make uh, image with this attribute and we use AI and deep, uh, deep learning AI to embed watermark at the same time of capturing. And second, it would be easy to authenticate uh, our multimedia on the internet or social media because every image and uh, video has a kind of robust identity and fragile watermark. So that's the advantage of using uh, built-in watermarking. So wrap up, uh, we got family with watermarking technology, which we embed a robust or fragile watermark into the cover data and the uh, embed watermarking data should not be different, should look same as the original one. And for, we got family with two main applications of digital watermarking, which are ownership protection and predictions. And at the end, we got familiar with the future technology in camera systems. Here are additional resources. Uh, this is my uh, first um, article about an intelligent and blind dual color image watermarking for authentication and copyright protections. I, I will share this link on the chat and everyone wants to read more can access to my paper. Here I suggested a method to embed at the same time a robust and fragile watermark to protect our valuable image. And here is a survey article that explains what about technology based, uh, using a single value decomposition SVD based and here is my tech web, a web blog, I mean. This is my tech web blog. I, I share my watermarking experience, knowledge in this web blog. And this is the link of some researchers who are working on future camera systems. This is the article news about them. And thank you so much for your attention. And if someone has question, I'm ready to answer your question. So it sounds that no one has question. Hi, Sajjad. Hi, Mahdi. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your nice presentation. I personally uh, got familiar with many concept of uh, image watermarking and other things. Just uh, I was uh, wondering about what is the act of the artificial intelligence uh, in the proposed optimization feedback system. Just want to know how like um, AI can help in this uh, like security of domain and how it, how you can just uh, combine this concept and. Uh, just want to know some uh, like more idea about this. Okay, sure. Thank you for your question. Actually, it was a good question. Let me get back to that a slide here. We have a process here. If you follow my mouse pointer, yes. Uh, we we actually I'm working on that, and we want to use deep learning, not machine learning want to use deep learning to minimize the human interaction. Mm -hmm. Here, human, through this, over the time, uh, through this process, our deep learning method, we learn how to update themselves, uh, himself, how to use, you know, the difference between machine learning and 
uh, deep learning. In machine learning, you should teach the system, but in uh, deep learning, the system learned by himself. So here, deep learning, there are a lot of uh, algorithms for like many different ways, methods for embedding email, uh, watermark into the power data. Here, we try to provide a system for deep learning technology to learn by himself and to develop himself and choose the best way, the best methods for embedding uh, watermark into the cover data. That's how we use AI in this system. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So it seems there is no more question. So we had only one question in this talk. However, thank you so much for your attention. Uh, there are like some ways for you to get in touch with me. Here is my LinkedIn. I'm showing to you, and here is my GitHub. I share some codes of watermarking, image watermarkings, which are open source, and you can using MATLAB, and you can run it on your computer. And here is my email address, just in case you have questions, you can email me and ask me. And thank you so much for your attention. Have a good and wonderful time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome. Have a good time. Bye.